You know, like I go to the body, I'm going to do an 800 pound deadlift today. I just started <laughs> yesterday. What? No, like slow down, take your time, work your way up. Take a couple years, take three, four years. It doesn't matter because you're going to be doing this 20 years later. Is bodybuilding about selfies, steroids, magazines, and muscles? How do I become a successful pro bodybuilder or fitness competitor? Where do I even start if I'm new? And the biggest question of all, what are the judges looking for anyway? Even today with the internet, many people first discover bodybuilding by word of mouth. The lack of regulation has caused a boom of unqualified coaches, scattered info, biased advice, dangerous protocols, and posing trends that are a hot mess. After 20 years in the business, I have seen it all. Week after week, I'm going to talk about taboo topics that get swept under the rug, provide you tips and strategies to gain a competitive edge and stand out on stage in any division or federation. I'm going to answer all the burning industry questions without the bias. I have competed across six federations, earned pro status in three, and judged in two. I've coached posing and choreography for men and women in all federations and divisions. I know just how much competing means to you. I'm your host, Michelle Welcome, and you are listening to the Everything Else in Bodybuilding podcast. Be sure to download your free guide, Five Things Every Bodybuilder and Fitness Competitor Needs to Know Before Your Next Show at eeinbb.com. That's www.eeinbb.com. You know what the biggest thing is for me, honestly? I would say... I wish I would have gone into this with a different mindset around the length of time it's going to take to be a natural athlete. Mm. I, I'm telling you, like, I went into it gun ho Like, I'm all in. And, of course, you know, the mind's stronger than the body. So we're moving at an astronomical amount of rate mentally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to be in there eight hours. I'm going to look jacked. I'm going to be Hulk in, like, three weeks. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> I would totally, that's actually on, if I had to list off things that I wish I had known, is exactly that. How long it really takes mm. to make an actual significant transformation with your body. Yeah. Like how long it really takes to make a body composition change. Oh, that's effort, consistency, and time. And even just like dialing in for a show, like that's not when the magic happens. Mm. That's not. Like that's when you kind of see what uh, progress you've actually made underneath the layer that I call it. But that effort that you're making from the time off. Like a lot of people don't want to take time off yeah. after a show. They're like, oh, I'm going to compete again in the spring. But their feedback was you need to bring up some sort of muscle. You need to tone up maybe your hamstrings and glutes. Maybe you need to bring up your shoulders. Like, oh, I'm going to work on that over the winter. And yeah, then right. I'm going to compete in the spring. Have you heard that one? Yeah, right. And it's just going to be overnight and we're going to wake up and we're going to be Hulk. It's just what it is. But what it really doesn't work that way. Oh. Not as a natural athlete, no. anyway. No, what ends up happening is <laughs> you end up just recovering from your show yeah. and dialing right back in for the new one. Like yeah. You don't really make a significant improvement. So what I've been in and out of sports my whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been on little BMX bikes since I was a kid. That would probably be that in martial arts my whole life, right? So uh, I thought going into bodybuilding was no big deal. I'm going to come in. I, t I told her this. I said, look, I'll do a show, you, you know, did. just to see, just to see how... You know, it feels to do one so that we can converse about it and have something to share and talk about. I swear, I thought I was just going to do it just to be cool for her. Yeah, yeah, we were in a car with the rest of his bandmates. <laughs> so you were actually, you just launched your, your latest album and you guys were about, you were like launching. They were tour. like, you're not going on this endeavor right now. Are you crazy? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm like, ah, it's overnight. What's a couple sit ups? I know. Yeah, no big deal. We'll just add that to the regimen. Yeah, no. We're 10 years <laughs> later. I'm still working my buns off. No, yeah. honestly, if I if I would have set up a different perspective, uh, you know, psychologically, subconsciously, understanding the expectations of what it actually takes to be a true bodybuilder, a true physique athlete, you know, that where you focus in in and around the body and you rebuild it, you remold it, you know, right? I, I think I probably could have avoided a lot of, uh, well, body dysmorphia, self-consciousness. I mean, the list goes on and on, you know, mentally what you battle. I have a quick question at, at, for you. Uh -oh. Is the music on still? <laughs> yeah, because we got uh, a couple people letting us know that the background music is louder than us. <laughs> no, no, no. The <laughs> music is on? gone. Music, music is, is gone? Music is, as far as I could see here, I don't know, I got a little screen. Our, we, our computers, by the way, they, they need a good facelift. 
All right. Well, let us know if we're still too loud or not. And uh, we'll get back to what we were trying to talk about, which was everything with um, time it takes to actually make a significant improvement yeah. and how under Well, the expectations yeah. around what he's it means. He's thinking he's going to go on tour and promote his latest album. And by the way, I'm just going to add in a bodybuilding show. Right. No big deal. Right. And you would send me pictures and videos if you train in like a freaking maniac. So, do you remember doing that? I do. I'm still training like a maniac. <laughs> He's still training I'm like still a maniac. shooting for that that look, you know? <laughs> I'm still going there. But it does yeah. take a lifetime. Yeah. And some of these competitors that I've met that have been natural athletes, Dwayne Broadway's a great athlete that I, you know, I think, what, he's been doing it 40 years, you know? He's in his 60s, and his first show was 16 years old. So, and he's so 60 years old, and the guy looks great. 50 years. You know, he's he's yeah. just incredible. He's a he natural still looks athlete. like he could get up But there. he looks, in my opinion, the maturity that he's built over that extended period of time into his muscles really just give that definition that ultimately I identified with as a, as a younger adult. You know, as mm-hmm. a younger man, I was like, ah, you know, that's what I want to look like. That's what I'm going for. But I didn't realize at the time that that's just time. Yeah. You know, I mean, unless you're using drugs, which we, you know, everyone's body's different, but I'm 10 years in and I'm still going for it. You know, I, I think I got at least another 10 or 20 years to see what kind of uh, result will happen from the time in. And if I would have known that in the beginning, yeah, you know, like, cause you don't know that you don't, you know, you see these transformations online, you see the before and afters, you don't realize the amount of effort it takes to really well, make a be, difference. But let's be clear. There's a difference between weight loss and bodybuilding definitely okay so let, let's just kind of draw that line right there we haven't, like we haven't oh, wait, set that tone yet uh well just to be clear so like the name of the show is about, everything else in bodybuilding just for anybody who's else. tuning in right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah but a weight loss journey it can take it doesn't necessarily mean a significant amount of time to lose weight no what we're talking about is a body composition change or even significant muscle growth that happens yeah. on a natural body the physiological show. shift the the psychological shift that happens when being in the gym you know i mean that's something that you've taught me takes you know i mean takes everything we have day in and day out. i don't think there's really any other sport that does this i mean mma gets close don't get me wrong and it's a little bit different but with bodybuilding it's lifelong and then stay in and stay out that's actually a good analogy so like jujitsu yeah you're not gonna like all of a sudden learn everything that you need to know about jujitsu to be a black belt in a year that takes time mm. like how many years does it take to actually become a black belt in jujitsu it depends but it's not going to be in a year mm. you could there's there's so many things to learn and even just that the movement patterns and the strategy it's like a chess game like there's not a way around that time no matter how many drugs you did there's no way that you're going to learn all the th- different nuances of each of the <laughs> yeah. different moves yeah like there's no way around that there time. is no real limitless pill no, and if there no is limit. though you can hit me up on instagram you know where i'm at <laughs> 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 yeah, but you know, the, the thing is with the amount of time, like I can talk from looking at my physique when I first started training and I was, I was training for bodybuilding. This was, um, I was 20. And then from there, looking at my physique on stage in my early twenties, and then 10 years later in my early thirties, there was no comparison, the mm. detail quality, mm. the body composition change that I was able to do to kind of bring my legs in mm. and down so that I had better symmetry that, especially for women that, that if that's your area that you got to like taper, that takes time. Yeah. And that was something that took 10 years for me to really, really hit a stride and have a quality yeah. physique that was to me pro quality. So, so you think quality. 10 years then I to, think to kind of get of, going because I feel the same way. I feel like I'm 10 years in and honestly, I feel like I'm finally hitting a stride minus the injuries, you know, that I've been trying like for to get. detail, the quality, mature muscle with a lot of detail, the carving, the separation Well, let's, of the let's quads. go back to the jujitsu analogy, right? Like, so you can spend 10 years or more or a lifetime <laughs> trying to master, become a black belt, this, that, and the other, whatever. But let's say it does take you 10 years, which is an average road, you know, for a black belt in jujitsu, like a gi average road. Not saying you can't do it faster or you can't do it longer or whatever. But what happens is you've gained this knowledge at 10 years, and now the game kind of starts over. Right. Because when you're in that particular environment with all the knowledge and intellect that you've put the time in, it's like kind of starting at ground zero, but it's a different mountain. So now you've achieved this and you realize, oh, my God, there's a whole nother level to this. And that's where, like, I feel bodybuilding for me at this point. Yeah, I I made tremendous strength gains in the first couple of years. I lost a lot of weight. I felt better about myself. I got really healthy. I mean, there was a lot of positive reinforcement, but the true body recomp, the true strength gains you know the maturity that happens over time wasn't something that i realized you know just how long it could take and i think 
now that I'm here 10 years later, kind of like with jujitsu or something along those lines, it's more exciting for me because I can put up more weight. I can do more at the gym. I can see the results a little bit differently. So now I'm like, wait a second, how far can I push this? Mm -hmm. You know, how far can I go with it? How far can my body take me to, you know, whatever layer is there that I didn't even realize was there that you wouldn't even know was there until you've gotten to that 10 year mark, you know? So, but that beautiful thing that has evolved in the bodybuilding industry over the past, like 10, 15, 20 years has been the, uh, the addition of divisions that don't require that level of maturity to your muscle, that level of detail. So what's really neat about the bodybuilding industry is that there has been the addition of divisions that you could be two to three years of training and be highly competitive. You can be five to eight years of training and be highly competitive in another division. But if it were, you know, if you're really looking for that significant body composition change within that bucket. So let's just say you're at the five year mark. You've been training consistently, but you need to change. Like when I say body composition, let's just say like your imbalance from the upper body to lower body. You want to change that. It's not going to happen in a few months. Mm. It takes, that's what I'm saying. It takes a significant amount of time. You might want to put a year or two aside to make that change with your physique before you start to dial back in. I think there's, so there's kind of two different discussions going on and I want to make sure we draw that distinction. The 10 year mark is for like that real maturity to the muscles, the detail, the splits, the separation that, um, that look that, for example, if I'm in the, my off season, you can still see cuts in my legs. That's from maturity Mm. versus like you're now in, you know, five, a couple of years into training, you've got some like a nice base. You could be competitive in certain categories versus like what we're talking about is more of a long term strategy of yeah. body shape and definition. And, and why do I so think I want to be clear on that, that? Why is that important? Like we could we could tell ourselves anything when we, you know, we're 10 years ago when we started 20 years ago for you. Why is that important? I, I touched on it briefly earlier. I think really it's it's to set up the right expectation for the results that I'm hoping to gain from this particular endeavor that I'm seeking, right? So like in jujitsu, I kind of know I'm going to the mats. I'm knowing it's going to take me some time. There's competitors who are better than me. They've been doing it for 10, 20, 50, you know, some 30 years, right? Like, so you, if you're, in my opinion, if you're a little bit smarter about how you approach it psychologically, you could set up the expectations for yourself for your own output of results, Meaning I'm not going to roll with a black belt as a white belt and keep up with them. It's just not happening. I don't care. I don't have that time. I don't have that experience. Yes, I could learn fast. Potentially. Maybe it takes me longer. But I know that almost kind of going into that particular sport. And a lot of sports you do. Basketball, football. You go and you're like, okay, it's going to take me a season or two to kind of learn how to shoot, you know, a free throw here or something. Right. But it, 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 it's something, you know, going into it already. With bodybuilding, there's this kind of misconception because mm. you see weight loss. Yeah. You see these 60-day transformations, 30-day transfers, six packs in 12 weeks, and you yeah. don't realize that that's completely different than what bodybuilding actually is. And for me, psychologically, I think the expectation of what I could have set up for myself, understanding that, like going into this, and, and we talked about this a lot on what it means to have a bodybuilding lifestyle, and we elaborated on it. We, mm-hmm. we did a separate episode, again, to kind of just elaborate a little bit more on what this means, why we believe this is a lifelong sport, and how I think that's just a, such a healthier mindset to go into something, understanding, like, there's no top, there's no end, you know what I mean? You only get better the more time you get in. Yeah, there's going to be injuries and things, and yeah, of course, you're going to get through all that, but that's kind of like part of the game. You're going to roll an ankle when you're rolling, or you're going to do something stupid. Like, you know, (laughs) you'll learn. But I think having that right expectation, right, knowing that this is something that's going to be a lifelong commitment, marriage, food, sleep, water, we talked about this. It really allows me to take a deep breath from the expectation of what I hope to get out of my body. You know, like I go to the body, I'm going to do an 800 pound deadlift today. I just started (laughs) yesterday. What? No, like slow down, take your time, work your way up. Take a couple years, take three, four years. It doesn't matter because you're going to be doing this 20 years later, 30 years later. You want to save your joints on your body. You want to make sure your tissues are strong. You want to rebuild the body, make it stronger, make it strong mentally. Right. So it makes a tremendous difference. I think it's really important, especially if you're just starting. And I think that's great that there are options to uh, goals along the way. So like bikini, if you're a few years into training and then all the way up to women's physique, if you've got maybe 10 years of training and you've got the ability to get yourself 
really lean for competitions and see that detail and that quality. I like that there's this evolution now versus it used to be just bodybuilding. Mm. And now that you've got road, uh, you've got little mark milestones along the way, Mm. but the distance between those milestones, when you have to make changes at your current state is not something that should be rushed. Mm. So just like if you, you know, your glutes and hamstrings, for example, if you don't have the detail, I make this analogy in some of my classes where like, think of a supermodel who's running, who's on the runway. Aren't they super duper lean? (laughs) <laughs> yes. What's the difference? They don't have the muscle tissue there. Mm. So some people are like, well, I wasn't lean enough. I wasn't like, lean yeah, enough. It's no. like, no, you're not. It has nothing to do with you being lean enough. Yeah, it's that you haven't have built the muscle tissue the muscle maturity. to see yeah. the detail when you get lean. Yeah. And that, and that takes, takes time. 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 So, yes. all right. So that was the first thing. <laughs> yes. Underesting how, underestimating how much time it takes to actually make some significant Yeah, and changes. setting up the right expectations so that when you go into the endeavor that you're hoping for, whether that's weight loss or, you know, lose 30 pounds or you want to be Arnold or Mr. Olympia or Ms. Olympia or whatever it is you're, you know, shooting for, you know, you want to win the Orton Cup. It doesn't matter. Understand the progress it's going to take. And allow your body to adapt. Allow your mind to adapt. This is this is lifelong. So I have a really dumb thing that Uh-oh. I that I learned from. <laughs> well, by the way, anybody that's just tuning in right now, put in the chat anything that you were like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that when I can't believe I believed that when I first started training. I wish I knew that so I didn't have to make that mistake. I have one. Okay. Okay. Right. So I think it was a Saturday morning and or maybe even a Sunday. And I, I was always going to the gym super early to get it done. Okay. And I remember going and thinking fasted was a good idea. <laughs> so but at that time, I was also encouraged to do an hour of cardio, yeah. too. Yeah. So to me, I just wanted to get the dreadful hour of cardio out of the way. Again, this was like 20 years ago. Yeah. I wanted to get, oh, and by the way, there was the television and it was all like the shh like tube on television? the screen. Yeah, tube television. Wow. You know, with the sparkle. Oh, my God. And the you must have been a child. You were like two years old or something. I must have been. Yeah. Anyway. So here I am, I get through my hour, I fasted, and then it's time to go lift. So I go into the other room where I'm, and I'm on a lat pull down machine and I'm starting to kind of like, huh, starting to get a little lightheaded. Next thing you know, I'm out. Yeah. I literally passed out yeah. in the gym from not having any food, low blood, uh, blood sugar tanked. And I just was not fueled and I had to call for a ride to go home. (laughs) So that I've definitely learned from that you can't be not eating before you go and train. And especially something like that. So thinking you're going to go lift some heavy weights so after to, to be to be direct fasted. you're saying to, to be a bodybuilder and try to lift Dumb. fast try to lift fasting is probably not a good we talked about this no. a little and you know idea. what it means to be a bodybuilder and what that lifestyle looks like and i talked a little bit about the stupid that you know that i do you know and have done you know the raw food and vegan and no carbs and low carbs and you know oh my god <laughs> oh my god are you kidding me the stupid things that we've done no i think is it possible to maintain fasted output? Yeah, you could do it. You know, it, can you allow your body to physiologically adapt to that environment to make it stronger and more resilient over time? I think in moderation, that could be a good thing. But to maintain, you know, the, the power and the speed and the output and the energy, there's an advantage to having a balanced approach to things. And when you push it as extreme as we do <laughs> when we're at the gym, because we, you know, we're there for two, three hours, you know. And uh, who's there for two? I'm not there for two. Anyway, uh, no, I, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Sometimes I do eat in between work with when I'm there. I do separate my workouts. But to do that, I have found as well that, you know, being properly fueled, balanced throughout the day allows me to maintain that recover better long term. Yeah. If I would have known to not listen to the junk yeah. that's on the Internet about nutrition <laughs> and apply fat loss and marketing genius. To bodybuilding, oh man, I definitely could have avoided, well, yes, a lot. (laughs) I actually, I learned, I did learn from that where I found a, the best I ever looked for competitions was when I did not pair my cardio and my weightlifting. Mm. So I separated cardio and weightlifting as two separate types of workouts. So if I had to do them on the same day, and I never did at that time more than a half an hour of cardio. It was never, that was never the tool that was to get me ready for the show. 
that was something that I learned too. So never did I do these hours of cardio ever at that point. Yeah. And the best I ever looked, the most cut I ever looked on stage. So I did learn from that and having the proper fuel, but that the, what I'm looking to do with cardio is completely different than what I'm looking to do with lifting. So lifting, I'm trying to actually like, you know, put up some weight. Point. Yeah. The, the distinguished difference between what it means to bodybuild, mm-hmm. power lift, weight loss, cardiovascular, like any cardiovascular work, VO2 work, what that means physiologically, that kind of work, you know, versus bodybuilding, what it means to, you know, hypertrophy and, and, and hyperplasia and how does that play in the tissues and the different effects. I mean, there's, there <laughs> is so much to understand when you go through this, you know what I mean? So yeah, the more information we could add when we, again, like you don't go into it thinking, I'm going to try to get a PhD in understanding how the body functions. You're just like, I just want to look good. I want to feel good. Like, I want to lose weight. I want her to, you know, let's, woo, 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 let's do something. <laughs> what was yeah, that? Yeah, that was it. Anyway, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, That's but funny. really, you don't, you don't set that expectation understanding how much of, you know, like, I think the human body is like an amusement park, man. Like, it's so complicated. It's so complex. There's so much going on. If we think, like, one variable is going to make or break or be this dream ingredient or this, that, or this one, if I could get an hour more sleep. or th- It's like, no, man, it's a combination of everything and, and a balance to everything. So what else? So what else do you wish you knew when you first started training that you know now? Wow. Um, Anything stick out for you? <sighs> so what, what did we talk about? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because there's so much, you know what it is, is... I think I think at the end of the day, the biggest thing is I would have told myself to go easier on the expectations of what I hope to achieve. I, I touched on that a little so bit that's earlier, your big one. but that big is one definitely is expectations. expectations, understanding what it means to actually be a bodybuilder and to do it in a way that is maintainable, that is healthy, both physically and, and subconsciously and consciously, you know, both how, how much that's going to affect the relationships in our life, how much that's going to check, uh, affect the habits in our life. How much of a carryover was going to actually be? I had no idea. Uh, I got a good one. And what you're floating away over there? Where are you going? <laughs> I got a good one that I wish I had known. That has had so, so much power has been deload weeks. Mm. Yeah, that de-load ties right weeks. into it. It ties so right into overwork. So those of you who don't know what a deload week is, is after a significant period of progressive overload. Over a significant period of time, I'm talking weeks and weeks and weeks, not the four week, you know, the mark and all of a sudden magically the workout needs to change. I'm talking about a, prog- a length of time that you're basically getting to the point where your body has, it needs a break because you've pushed it, you've mm. made significant improvements, you've maybe even hit a PR and then it's time to like tone it down for a week. Yeah. And that's a deload week. It's basically a tone, taking things down a notch for that week. Not not lifting at all. Yeah. But you're bringing down the load the per, uh, for that week significantly. Allowing de-load your body to recover. So that you have almost a recovery week. So you're, again, you're not doing nothing. It's not this magical week off from the gym that doesn't really, that's not the magic in this. It's pulling back on the volume, yeah. pulling back on the Intensity. stress. Intensity. And the intensity. Yeah, the intensity for and sure. And that to me has been a, what, that was when I learned that. That was a significant game changer. Well, I'll add right to that. I'll add right to that. Anybody else do deloads? If I could have known how simple bodybuilding was, Mm -hmm. meaning there's only so many moves we can do. Yes, there's hundreds of different angles and iterations of that. But the reality is you're pushing something, picking something up, you know, pulling something, throwing something, maybe jumping on something. If you, you know what I mean? Like there's not much to it. So this overcomplicated concept Mm. That it's going to be this $5,000 program that needs to be built by some crazy scientist. All or you nothing know? approach. Yeah, right. Like, it's, like it's, it's actually really not that complicated. Yes, it can get that really cool, actually, and very complex. But if you keep it stupid simple and stick to some of the big moves, you're doing that the rest of your life. Sure. You know what I mean? So you don't have to put so much stress on... on Oh man, I hope this is the right thing, and this is the ra- the last time I'm going to do this until I move. It's it's going to make me move to that next exercise faster. You know, it's like no nah, man. It's like stick to the basics. They always work. They're going to be forever. You know, when a bird's got to fly to go get a worm, they're using their wings every time. Mm-hmm. Like it's consistency, right? I mean, I've 
to the point where the overtraining to me, I remember there was a moment, well, it was a couple of moments where the overtraining, because again, no D low week, this um, pedal to the metal and that you just can't sustain that for mm. a lengthy period of time. And thinking that's something that you have to do if you're going to make significant improvements. And that to me worked to a detriment to the point where I can remember having the worst shin splints ever. I even went and had a bone scan and they saw stress fractures in my shins mm. because of the amount of work that I was doing. At the time, I was really doing a lot of sprinting and all kinds of impact work. Yeah. And that that was an eye opener. And that mm. was highly unnecessary. It didn't need to happen that way. I think this all ties back into the expectations of things. Like, that's why I really emphasize that. That was definitely the biggest takeaway. I think we expect more out of our bodies than our bodies can handle. Sure. Our minds go into things, especially as, as competitors, our minds go into things wanting to conquer the task at 100% and put every ounce of effort that we can into that while we do it and understanding the complexity of the body and what it can actually handle and what it needs to recover and respecting the recovery yeah. aspect that you can't just put a pedal to the metal no. like if you had a what's um what do you call it? like a volkswagen beetle <laughs> let's just say a volkswagen beetle Are we something, buying a car you know something no, no no just like or even geo metro like How a, about like that? a doom buggy just Volkswagen? something, something and, something and you basically just put anything. the okay. pedal to uh to the maximum oh so like a go-kart and put the pedal to the maximum. Okay. How long, how many years do you think that car would last? Yeah. Versus I mean, right. if you went maybe 60 miles an hour. Garage kept, you know, <laughs> nice oil change every yeah. every couple thousand miles, new tires all the time, brakes, rotors, not just the brakes. You're doing rotors too every time, like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. We're going to go in there and we're going to we're gonna drive this thing at 110 miles an hour and hit the well, wall as hard as we can. Well, hold on. Garage cap, but you can't not drive it, though, because right. I've heard that right. isn't there a saying that a car that sits falls apart? Yeah. Like, yeah. you have to move it. So I'm not. So the human yeah. body, you need to move it. Balance. And it, stress is a good thing. Yeah, because, it can be. Yeah, yeah. Having some sort of stress and recovery. Yeah. But there comes a point where you have to like dial it back and give your body time to recover. So and finding that's something that I wish I had known from the beginning that would have, I think I would have made even more improvements Absolutely. younger and I would have had a well, better we, physique. You would have had that's different expectations of what you were hoping to achieve, right? Like if you would know that maybe I shouldn't do hundred miles an hour in this Geo Metro right now, but my body, <laughs> but my body, you know, I mean, it'll be a drag racer in 30 years if I, if I treat it right and I'll be able to do the quarter mile in a second. But I can't do that right now. I have to. I have to like let the car warm up. I gotta, you know, build it in and break it in. And especially now, gotta let this car warm up. <laughs> yeah. All these little details, you know. I mean, I think this <laughs> ties back into the expectations. If we could have had those expectations, mm. what our body could, you know, do versus what we think it can do, and what it actually takes to be a professional bodybuilder. I say professional, like day in, day you. out. If you're sick, if you're not feeling well, there is tomorrow. Thinking that, oh my goodness, I'm I'm ruining my prep because I can't peel myself out of bed. I have 104 degrees. Oh. I'm sick. And if I don't go to the gym, that I'm not going to win first place. Yeah, you're putting that, that like you harsh expectation that this is going to be the one thing that makes you a better human being today. And it's not always the case. You know, yeah, does it make me... Um, more complete in my day to go to the gym. Usually it does. It makes me feel more complete about my day. It makes me feel healthier, healthy brain, healthy body, healthy blood flow, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm not going to beat myself up like I used to if I'm taking time off because I know this is the rest of my life. And so with that, I have a, a much more balanced approach to what I hope to achieve physically. You know, I think that's important to do that. You know what I'm saying? Expectations, proper nutrition pre-workout, potentially even proper nutrition for the training style that you're doing, and deload. So I'd say those are the top three. Do you mm. have any others? Yeah, no, I think I that's... I one. Uh -oh. One more. Okay. The hip thrust. <laughs> Where the heck was the hip thrust 20 years ago? I know it, yeah. Oh, my goodness. The secret weapon. That, to me, is like the one of the best workout inventions. Technically, you're pushing. <laughs> Just saying. Just Still saying. see a, I don't see a lot of guys do a lot of the hip thrust. Although you do them like a champ. I love You're them. in there. Yeah, I love them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they've made a, a <laughs> tremendous a tremendous be benefit to my overall regimen for sure. And I can see potential carryover into different lifts. I mean, it's hard to say, you know, because in my opinion, you're growing gradually over time regardless. So you know, I think is this going if, on over if here? This... this is like off the camera. <laughs> well, you know, I'm trying to stay. Am I center in this thing? 
Should I be here? I don't know where to go. <laughs> you stepped on my foot. <laughs> so the hip thrust, you like the hip thrust. The studies yeah. do show that hip thrusts, according to the studies, do show that it does improve your squat. That would be something I would so tell myself. I would tell myself important. if I were to go back 10 years, I, and I kind of touched on it a little bit, is just to not get involved in the nonsense. Like, you know, like there's science out there. There's studies out there. There are true researchers and experts and doctors who can shed some light and do. You know, if I could have known that information, like even some of the podcast episodes that you've done and we've done, some of the interviews, some of the people we've met, Mm -hmm. if I could have had those episodes 10 years ago, yeah, I I would have not done a lot of stupid things that I did Well, that's why I started the podcast, because I wanted to bring the information and not be all about one federation, not to be all about one division, not to be all about men, all about women. Like, I really wanted a consolidated location Mm -hmm. for people, because I do believe that fitness is an extremely saturated market. Bodybuilding is, too, but it's also highly unregulated. Mm. So half the stuff that's out there is nonsense. Yeah, right. So it's trying to bring a place with real experts, real experience that people can listen to and have like a trusted resource. That's my goal. When you say real, I think you mean informed. Informed experts, people who have knowledge, people who have put in the time, Mm -hmm. whether they've gotten lots of clients, whether they're PhD grads, they're researchers, they're competitors themselves, whatever it is, you know, speak to the veterans. They're going to know. You know, I mean, that's the reality of it. Don't listen to the YouTube influencers. You know, don't get lost in the, the nothingness that exists out there to the next scam that somebody's selling you. Like, it's just what it is. And buy into it because dude's got a six pack or she's got a cute butt or whatever it is. And all of a sudden, you know, like, oh, let's do what they're doing. And it's like, no, <laughs> that's not do what they're doing. I think the one thing I learned from day one that has never left me. So let's flip the flip it upside down now. So things that we wish we we wish we would wish we would have known when we first started training how about what do we, are we glad that we figured out from the very get-go? Mm. I would say headphones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Headphones. Yeah. Extremely important. Yeah, you see the old videos or the older videos of Arnold and whatnot, you know, like the pumping iron videos and whatnot, and none of those guys are wearing headphones. Obviously, they were being filmed, you know, but you, yeah, you don't even think of that. Oh, I well, don't if know. you have someone screaming in your ear... Uh, that that will motivate you. Yeah, for sure. But who's at the gym? Who's at the end? Nobody. Fitness I'm saying nobody's doing that. over to you to, to shout in your ear. No one's doing well, that. We kind of do a little. I do. <laughs> well, we've gotten into a little. Yeah, yeah, we started. We worked out a couple times together without headphones. It was a little painful. Yeah, I think twice. It took me to kind of years. peel them out of my ear, <laughs> and it was definitely not as easy to get into the workout. Like I find that headphones kind of like allow me to center inward and tune out mm. everything. It definitely puts me in a zone, for sure. Yeah. 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 Like, can you imagine? Have you lifting? ever turned around when you got to the gym, realized that you forgot headphones and went oh. home and got them? Oh, man. I'm just going, I'm not working out. No, I did. I'm not working out. No. I've done that. No, I'm Went all home. the way back. I'd go get them, for sure. Yeah. 100% <laughs> before I worked out. Definitely. So I definitely learned that. It's definitely. the importance and the yeah. significance Music of Music is headphones. everything. You gotta have it. Puts yes. you in a vibe. Puts you in a zone. Puts you, brings you there. Especially, mm. especially, especially when working out. 100%. Yeah. All right. Okay. I hope that helps you guys. <sighs> Who's I'm going to, to Dairy Queen? <laughs> I love to hear what you guys have to say about anything that you might have learned that or learned over the years that you wish you knew significant things that you wish you knew when you first started training. Love yeah. to hear what you guys have to say. So tune in to the Everything Else in Bodybuilding Insiders podcast group. Those of you that are on with us today, it's been a joy to have you. Uh, Tracy, Nikki, Brandy, Kathy, Jenny, and so on. What up? Me. So good to have you guys. So we'll be back again next week. We do, again, go to learntopost.com. We do have some virtual clinics coming up. NPC, yeah. OCB, yeah. Fitness Universe. So yeah. head on over there. What? Yep. Did you get that? We're doing NPC clinics. We're doing OCB clinics. We're doing the gamut. If you're looking to do a One bodybuilding show, shows. which I know you are because you're here. You've either done one or somebody you know is doing one, right? Then you need to go to learntopost.com because there's some cool stuff going on. Don't you want to get informed? Pretty simple. All right. Okay. We'll sign it off for this week. We'll catch you guys again, same time, same place, 1 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. See you next week. Peace. Ever wonder if you are posing correctly for your division? Learn to Pose is dedicated to taking out the guesswork on how to pose for all categories in bodybuilding. Learn five ways you can improve your posing skills in five minutes guaranteed at www.learntopose.com. 
are free posing tutorials available for the bikini, figure, and men's physique categories, and more on the way for other divisions in bodybuilding. It's free, so go access your free posing tutorial for bikini, figure, or men's physique at learntopose.com.